play around with variables. Your mind will get neutral a lot quicker if you do some of each of the boundaries than if you just constantly try to do neutral. So yeah, get some little shots, relax the wrist, get the club in here and start snapping the thing, feel a little of that resistance. Thanks for tuning in guys. Kerry Gray here on the range today at Raptor Bay Golf Club in South Florida here with Adam Bazaljet, the founder of Scratch Golf Academy, an amazing channel over there on YouTube. So make sure you go ahead and check them out. This week we are at this wonderful facility for the Golf Fanatics Golf School with Andrew Rice, Jeff Ritter and Erica Larkin. And today we are talking all about eliminating that chicken wing. Adam here is going to give you some great information on how to eradicate that plague that we see with a lot of golfers. Adam, looking forward to it mate. Let's get stuck in. So Adam, uh, tell me what you see with the majority of golfers who struggle with, let's call it a plague among many a player, which is the chicken wing coming through, the arms you bunching can up. safely say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me what you see with players who struggle with this element in their golf swing. What are your kind of big keys to eliminate that? Well, I mean, I, first thing I would say, if you're you probably do know what that is but if you look at yourself on video i'll go slow motion Karen, and mm -hmm. i'll whack you in the hips if when your hands are about tummy high if the shaft is lower than your right forearm let's say as a right-handed golfer in other words if it hasn't at least caught up to your hands and mm. if when you look from this view on video when you look over your back if the first thing you see is your elbow upper arm instead of say the club shaft and the club head whipping out you've to some extent got a chicken wing. It doesn't have to look wildly exaggerated, but if the club isn't passing your hands and the elbow's beating the club head out of the other side of your body, that's you. And I think the single biggest thing, there's really a couple of things that I see, but I think the single biggest thing is that top-notch players store a little bit of energy in the club. That's a whole subject in and of itself, but it's not that hard to do. They have a good grip, obviously, that gives their wrist mobility, but they store energy and they transfer energy better. And the energy of the golf club is the primary thing that snaps their wrist and snaps their arm straight. Yeah. In other words, it's not something that you can just manufacture if you don't have some pop and some motion. That's the first thing I see. So. Yeah, absolutely. So if I set up to this golf ball here and you're just kind of talking me through this, yeah. let's say I get to the top and we... Right. So let's say your grip is too much in the palm of the glove hand. Mm -hmm. In other words, your wrist isn't very mobile. And let's say you've release the energy of the club. There's really oh, yeah. nothing to snap your arms long. So the only source of movement you have probably is a lot of arm and chest speed. Therefore, the club doesn't snap and catch up. Hopefully it wouldn't look that much, but that's the look you'd probably get. So I think first thing, create some mobility in the wrist and some pop in the club head on a small scale. Try one there. Yeah, so a lot of that's mainly just putting the golf club down in the yeah. fingers a little Under bit. Under that more. fleshy muscle pad, you'll feel your you'll feel some leverage where you can make your wrist push down. Leverage, as they probably say in Perth. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So right, just even from doing that, I yeah, feel like I've feel got that. more yeah. mobility to create some potential angle here yeah. as that golf club's coming down. So then we're feeling like we're trying to store up and then release yeah. some width. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realize is when they put 3D motion captures on top-notch players, chest, arms, hips, you can include that, they themselves are actually slowing down through impact. And it's that mm. deceleration that creates acceleration. I think so many people, as I ask this, people, ask this to people all the time in golf lessons, so many people, they're more associated with themselves than the club, so they're trying to hit harder, oh, they yeah. speed up, so they don't transfer energy. So take a setup there, Karen. As you come, as you make a little swing, feel like your left tricep mm -hmm. coming in just kind of digs into your ribs and really kind of tightens in and against that resistance, oh, you yeah, can wow. pop those wrists. Give it a little half shot there and see what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do a little practice swing here. That's it. So you feel some pressure in here. Yeah, some amazing. Resistance. And again, with the good grip, that club's going to pop. Not every player looks as straight and released as every other player that's great, but you'll get your share of release and you won't get that chicken wing, I'm sure. Yeah, what we do see, right, is just that the same sensation on the way through is a lot of the time of those players saying that they kind of feel like they pop up and mm -hmm. they're running out of room, right? And we see not only just this lead arm, so the left arm for the right hander breaking down mm -hmm. but the wrist extending, but also the separation. Absolutely. The you make a great point, point because grab the club again there mm -hmm. and set up. This would be another reason for it. There's probably two other reasons. 
one, and it relates to that first one of not storing energy. If the player releases and is apt to hit the ground too early, oh, yeah. subconsciously they'll adjust and start to lift a little bit. Some people lift the body and not the arms, some lift the arms. But again, if you have stored energy, if you have angle, you're, you, you're not going to hit the ground too early, or not significantly too early, and you can release it there. The other one, the third one, if you like, those two are connected. Mm. When the club comes from out to in, not that too many people do that, what about 90% <laughs> of people? I get too much this way, so oh, I'm yeah. not laughing at you. But when the club comes from out to in, it is effectively moving towards you too much, and you'll tend to run out of space, and it often leads to a bit of that jam stuck look in the left arm. Yeah, yeah. So usually when you see a good young player, you know, some skinny 17 year old can hit it a mile, the club's back behind them and it's releasing more that way. That might be too much into out, but that will never look like a chicken wing. And, so we, he, and we do see that players who struggle with, let's say this over the top bunching of the yeah. arms, it's okay to then try and do the opposite and Absolutely. try and get that club exiting as That's far as That's how you gain skill can. in things, is play around with variables. Your mind will get mm. neutral a lot quicker if you do some of each of the boundaries than if you just constantly try to do neutral. So. Yeah, get some little shots, relax the wrist, get the club in here and start snapping the thing, feel a little of that resistance. Those two checkpoints we showed you on camera, is the club passing your hands by about hip high? And when you look from this angle, are you seeing the club head and club shaft first before you see your sleeve before and arm? the lead arm, yeah. Play around with it, put the ball on a tee and just slap it a little bit, get the feel. It isn't that difficult to do, otherwise so many, you know, so many good players couldn't do the correct thing. It's not, correct. It's not that much of a difficult learned habit. So it's, it, I would say, one last key here now to this try and right put this here, all together. Andrew had him on the launch monitor yesterday. He hit one drive at 3.28. So I haven't watched Carrot swing yet, but there's no chicken wing here. I can tell you that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So there's no the... snow on the surface yeah. of the sun either, by the way. <laughs> so one of the big keys that we'd just be looking for here in the setup is to ensure that we are relaxed, right? Yeah, Our absolutely. Our arms are loose. We're kind of getting a little bit of this pumping, this bit of a pre-shot routine that we see that the professional absolutely. does. That applies well as soon as we get that golf club a little bit in the grip, we're feeling like we're getting this load coming down. And then like you said, a little bit of a squeeze yeah. with this upper, or this tricep on this lead side of the body mm -hmm. here on the rib cage, that feels like it's really whipping Absolutely. through. Okay. So it's, it's good motion. Is the club coming from a reasonable path? Are the wrists mobile? Is there some energy being transferred? If you can get those, this chicken wing's going to go away. You, ju you just can't force this thing when you're swinging at high speed to just manufacture a, a good release you've got to get the motion and again the grip's important too because it gives you that mobility mm, mm. all right so let's put it all together right i'm going to set up all to right. this golf ball feeling nice and relaxed making sure that grip is down in the fingers i'm going to store up some of this energy i'm going to let it feel like it throws through the golf ball off we go well, that was pretty good. I'm actually watching that. That was thumped, that ball that right came there. That came off great. beautifully. So yeah. if you're struggling with your chicken wing, try these tips out from the big man himself. Enjoy, work on this swing. You'll get a little bit more speed and power, compression off that golf ball, and it will help you lower your scores. Adam, thanks, thanks very much. Mate. Good to be with you.